Hey everybody, Dr. Oliver here from BackIntelligence.com and today we're going to talk about wearing high heels and how it can affect your low back. If you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button so you get access to videos as we put them out. So we're going to talk about how heels, wearing heels, whether they be really high heels or even moderately high heels, can affect your back and cause increased pain. So I have a lot of patients that wear heels on a regular basis and they have more back pain. So the question is, is this what's driving it? And simple answer is maybe, right? So it can definitely cause increased stress. So what we're gonna notice is as you lift that heel up, you're gonna transfer stress, or gonna transfer load to your toes, right? The forefoot. When you do that, you're gonna shift your center of gravity and in order to prevent you from falling over, you're gonna arch through your low back. So you're actually gonna increase that curvature in your low back. So that can put abnormal load into your lower spine, right? So you're gonna activate by curving your back, you're using the muscles, so you have paraspinals that run up and down your spine. So you're gonna increase the tone in those, so while you're wearing those, you're gonna have increased tension in those paraspinals. And then with that curve, as you increase a curve, you're gonna load those lower discs. So you can irritate what they call the facets. So those facets are the joints on the back of the spine. So increased load on the facets is gonna be more stressful. If you do that enough, you can create a facet type syndrome, which is very painful and uncomfortable for the low back. So simply putting on the shoes shifts your weight, shifts your gravity, and then basically you have to compensate for that. So it affects your back, but it also affects your feet a ton too. So we send, as you shift the weight into that forefoot, you put a lot more load there. So it's very common for people that wear heels frequently to have increased bunions and increased neuromas for in the forefoot. And it all has to do with shifting and putting all your body weight onto that area. So we're not gonna truly address the foot, but it's something to think about. If you have bunions and you have foot pain and you wear heels, it's something to think about. So if we have that increased load and increased position, basically they call that the lordosis when you increase your curvature in your back and you're putting more load, well, what do we need to do about it? Well, we wanna address the muscles, right? So if you're gonna wear heels and you need to wear them on a, on a frequent basis, then what you're gonna to need to do is address the muscles that are generally tighter. So your low back, those paraspinals that run up and down your back are generally tighter. We tend to see the hamstrings and the calves get tighter as well. So what we're gonna do is try to address those. So we can do soft tissue work, whether it be using a ball on the paraspinals, we can use a foam roller for your hamstrings and your calves to try to open those up a little bit. And you can do basic stretching, right? So if your calves are generally in this shortened position, you're gonna to wanna to lengthen those a little bit and do a little bit of stretching. You can do that on a stairs or a step as well. All right, so let's address some of those muscles that are tight. So we're gonna work on the paraspinals first. The way to think about your paraspinals is they run on either side of your spine. You're not gonna place the ball in the middle on your spine. So if you feel those little knobs running down your spine, don't put the ball there, okay? It would be uncomfortable, but it's not a good place. You wanna be just to the side, either side, from basically your ribs down to just above your hips. So Leon's gonna do it here, he's got a ball. You could use a lacrosse ball, you could use a general massage ball, whatever you have, and you're gonna kind of place it under that paraspinal and you're gonna kind of move it around. You can move it around with your hand, kind of up and down the spine. Sometimes it's a little easier than kind of moving around on it. But once you find a spot, you're just gonna hang out there and you're gonna breathe. So you're looking for that tender spot. It should be tender and uncomfortable, but you should be able to tolerate it. You should be able to breathe and it should start to let go. Could let go in 10 seconds, but a lot of times it's 20 or 30 or 40. No more than a minute, you want it to release in a minute. If it does, great, move on and look for another spot. You may find two or three on either side of your spine from your, again, about this region where your ribs are to about this region on either side. If it's not tender, don't waste your time. Look for something that's tender, but again, it can't be excruciating. If you're laying on the ground on this and you just can't relax into it, it's too much and it might be better for you on the, on the wall, but generally most people can tolerate this. So after we've released the paraspinals, then we're gonna work on the back of the leg. So we talk about the, the, generally the hamstrings and the calves tend to be pretty tight and sore as well. So hamstrings are relatively easy. You're gonna start kinda at your butt and you're just gonna sit on the roller. Good. And then you're just gonna straighten out the legs and roll back and forth. A lot of you will find that this doesn't feel like much at all. And so if that's the case, if you find no tenderness and you wanna increase the intensity of it, what you can do is stack one leg on top of the other. So Leon will flip one over and use that top leg to apply downward pressure and it'll make it more intense. So you'll feel more into that right hamstring. 
You may also need to turn your foot a little bit. So as you roll your leg, the hamstrings span both sides. You've got a few of them back there, and you're going to look for those areas that are really tight and tender, and you're going to focus on those. Hamstrings are big muscles, so you want, probably want to break it up into a couple segments, do the top half and the bottom half. So spend about 30 seconds to a minute on the top, 30 seconds to a minute on the bottom, move on. Again, look for the tender stuff. So after you roll out both of those, we'll go to the calves. So again, Leanne's going to kind of kick the roller down a little bit, put it right on your calves. And again, if you do it like this, most people are going to say, I don't know, it doesn't feel that bad. It's not that much pressure because not a lot of weight is on it. So again, we'll stack a leg on top of the other leg. Use that top leg to push down into that bottom leg. And again, if you need to turn the foot, you turn it. But once you find some tender stuff, you roll it. Or if it's really tender, just sit there. Just sit there and breathe and see if you can let it let go. So again, about a minute in these areas as well. So you spend about a, a minute in the top half and the hamstrings, and you're going to go down and spend about a minute in these calves as well. So after we've rolled these out, we kind of loosen these up a little bit. You got your back and the back of your legs. We're going to work on just a gentle stretch you can do throughout the day. So I'll have Leon stand up. So it's best to do this stretch over on either a stairway if you have or just a box you can put it down. And we're going to do one foot at a time. So Leon's going to pop up and he's going to go on one leg. So his one heel is going to hang off and he's just going to sit back. And again, he's looking to feel that stretch into that calf. And he's just going to sit deep into it about 20 seconds or so. And he's going to breathe it out. Again, trying to open up the back of that calf. And then he's going to switch and he's going to do the other side. So again, he's just sitting back. Feeling that tension again through that calf in there and just trying to open that up a bit. So let's see if you can open up the calves by stretching them, do some self-massage on those, the hamstrings and your low back, and see how it feels. But again, the key is to try to limit the amount of time you have in those higher heels. So if you can substitute out and either bring a pair of sneakers with you for when you don't need the heels, that's a good tip. But anything you do to log less time in the heels, you're probably going to notice it benefits your back a lot. So for any of these exercises and things we talked about, you definitely want to do both sides, right? Because it's not just usually one leg or another, even if you feel more tension one side or another. So you're going to want to do both sides. So both sides of your low back, both hamstrings, both calves, and you're going to stretch both calves as well. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you like it, as well as subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos just like this. Also, research shows that uh, you need to strengthen your core if you want to alleviate some of that low back pain. Uh, and not only that, but you need to make sure that the exercises that you perform really target those deep core muscles, and you need to make sure those exercises are safe for your spine. Now, we have a free PDF that we'd love to send you with uh, some of the most effective and safest core exercises that you can do from your home. So if you'd like to get that PDF, there's going to be a link to it somewhere here on the video or down below in the description. Just go to that page, enter your email, and we'll send you that free PDF right away.